Video bandwidth and distribution of Talking Scuba is provided by Blip TV. Talking Scuba is brought to you by viewers like you. Do your part by donating today by visiting TalkingScuba.com. Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of Talking Scuba. This is episode number 11. I'm Bob Shoemaker, an advanced open water instructor. And I'm Jim Norton, a dive con. And we are a weekly show discussing all sorts of different types of diving, um, from cold, deep wreck diving to shallow, warm reef diving and everything else in between. In this episode, we're going to talk about diving in Gull Lake and how Johnny forgot his BC and lied about it. Um, diving in Baptist Lake as well as the court. Uh, we have a, a product review as well as a book review in this episode as well. That's correct. What are you drinking today, Jim? Well, I've got some Captain Morgan private stock going on here. It's good stuff. How many shots have you done? <laughs> um, not enough yet. <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm actually drinking a homebrew one of Johnny B's uh, buddies made for us. And um, it's really actually pretty good. I think you tried some too, didn't you? Yes, it's very good. So, uh, uh, yep, drinking a little uh, homebrew today. Uh, first, let's talk about uh, Gull Lake. We went down to Gull Lake this week. Um, I haven't been down there in a little bit, and we had just a really good dive. We had pretty good visibility. I know you've dove down there quite a bit. Yep, yep. In <clears throat> fact, uh, I took Johnny down there when he did remember his BC. Oh, yeah, Johnny. We got all the way down there, and uh, we were getting set up and everything. Me and Derek were up at the car, and Johnny just goes, oh. And uh, Jason heard him, and he goes, what'd you forget? He goes, my BC. Don't tell anybody. So, so <laughs> he didn't tell anybody for a while. And then all of a sudden, you know, Jason walks up to talk to us or whatever, and he goes, you know, Johnny forgot his, his uh, BC, right? Well, earlier, Johnny had told us, oh, you know, my ears are hurting. You know, I, I don't think I'm going to dive today. I'm just not feeling I'm congested. A little congested, yeah. huh? Yeah, that's, I've heard that one Johnny before. Johnny B. is a liar. Just know that. Johnny B. Allen, liar. Unfortunately. So anyways, checks he didn't get to dive, but yeah, checks. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> so Johnny B. Allen is a liar. Um, next point, we had really good uh, visibility. The fish were out in full force. We had, um, just like usual, we had a lot of rock bass out. And um, they were protecting the beds, which was kind of neat. Oh, so, that's, that's um, interesting. You had yeah. a lot of interaction that way. Yeah, they'd come right up to your face and want to get you out of there as quickly yeah. as possible. We also came across a bunch of small little bass that were swimming around, and the, and the mom was kind of corralling them and keeping them around. Oh, it, really? Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Ah. Huh. So they had just hatched recently and, and were swimming around. Also came up to some beds. You could see really small, tiny, tiny ones if you looked really close that were still just coming out of the eggs. Just oh, had a little wow. tail on them. It looked like a tadpole almost. So that was pretty cool. Yep. Um, I've been diving like crazy, though. I went to Baptist Lake, did some diving out there as well. Um, and actually, my life has been changed this week. It has? Yep. I what started happened? diving without a BC, just diving like an old school back plate like that. Um, it's been oh, a lot of fun. Really? So we'll talk about that in a different episode, but you've been diving too. Uh, you went out and yep. dove on Lake Michigan. Finally got the boat to run properly. <laughs> so uh, went out and dove the cord, which is a old whale back. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was some pretty bad weather, and apparently they tried to make the channel. Couldn't. Missed the channel, got blown off to the north. Tried to make the channel again and got too close to the rocks. And got smashed up pretty bad on the rocks and, and kind of sunk right there in about, no, I don't know, 15 foot of water. And uh, nobody was killed, except they lost one guy, I believe, on the Coast Guard that was trying to attempt to, to save him. But uh, <clears throat> they salvaged most of the ship, but the boiler's still there, along with the rear end of the boat where the, the steering gearing was. Uh, that's still there. Uh, some other parts that I could not identify, but it's a good little dive. And that's uh, a lot Muskegon? of fish. Yes, right at the pier at Muskegon. That's kind of, uh, Muskegon's kind of neat because you can either go north or south out of Muskegon, and depending on where the wind is, that's where your visibility is going to be. So if you've that's got a correct. north wind, you're going to want to go towards the north because your visibility is going to be better because of the plume of the river coming out. Exactly. And we also, <clears> on the same dive, uh, we went off to the south of the pier. And we had heard that during the construction of the pier, they had excess rocks, limestone, large boulders. And they didn't know what to do with them, so they threw them away in a big pile down there. And people tend to, there's a big beach there, so people tend to anchor there. Oh. 
and they lose a lot of anchors. And of course, we see dollar signs and yeah. <laughs> went down and checked it out and uh, no anchors. Either somebody got there before us or whatever, but there's there's some pretty large rocks down there. Now, we, uh, we're we going to talk about, you tried a new uh, hair product, actually. Yes, I, I did. Use it, but you are going to use it. <laughs> yes, I already have used it quite a bit. It's a sub-series. There's a shampoo, a uh, conditioner, and also uh, a product that you spray on your hair prior to diving. And this is hair product specifically made for scuba divers and people that spend time in the water. It right? is, and it's it's got a great smell to it. It's, it smells like uh, mints. You want to smell my hair? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nobody wants to smell my hair, but it's it, it's pretty good stuff. It's it, it works very well. It is not. Uh, I do a lot of diving, so my hair tends to be very dry this time mm -hmm. of year. Now we don't have the salt and stuff like that that get in your hair, which this product seems to uh, to uh, say it removes the salt and chlorine. Which uh, if you do a lot of pool diving as an instructor, it might be good. But uh, have not used the stuff for prior to the dive yet. Okay, so you haven't used the protect in or whatever it's called, right? But the rest of it seems to work quite well. How uh, now? You've been doing a little bit of reading too, huh? Oh yeah, yep. Now, I'll tell you what, I've <laughs> it's one of the better books <clears throat> I've seen in a long time. It says "Man in Twelve Thousand Years Under the Sea." It's a. I thought at first, well, this is going to be another boring history type book, and I do love history, so. Uh, especially when it comes to shipwrecks and the mm -hmm. underwater world. So I'm excited about the book. I started reading it. It is really not that Not that, that boring? At all. Oh, <laughs> no. It's a, everything this, this gentleman writes about is an adventure and a story. And it's, it's very good. What's very the title? Uh, Man 12,000 Years Under the Sea. Cool. What, what kind of stuff are they talking about? Like the history of well, diving? Well, it started out, for example, it started <laughs> out uh, with some sponge divers in Greece. They're diving somewhere around the 200-foot mark, which, of course, you know, we're, you're pretty narked at that, that mm -hmm. depth. Well, one of the divers starts yanking on the uh, line to the surface, indicating he's got real problems. They drag him up as fast as they can, and he says, there's ghosts, there's ghosts. There's all kinds of ghosts. They're coming out of the water and reaching and trying to grab me. And they calmed him down, tried to calm him down, and one of the younger guys said, well... Get the old man out of the suit. I'll go down and see what the problem is. Down they go. He goes down there, and sure enough, there's arms reaching up out of the water, or out mm. of the mud. And there's statues, huh. marble statues from Greece, huh. like uh, 500 years before Christ or something like that. It was Jeez. just, and they, they made this big discovery. Wow. And it, it's it is stories very much like that. It's very good. And that, right now, I'm halfway through the book, and. Uh, We've gotten into the after World War II era, where guys are starting to get into the scuba diving, where they're a little bit freer to move around and spend a little more time. We had a little more knowledge of uh, depth and its effect on you. So it's starting to figure out decompression sickness, exactly, and nitrogen narcosis. Yep, and there not, not so many people are dying for these wrecks. Right. So there's more and more research going on, and it's very interesting. What was the other book you read? The other one I got uh, is Schooners in Peril. Uh, this is a little inexpensive book. I found it at one of the little bookstores. And the interesting part of it is it's all about these Great Lakes schooners hmm. that sailed the Great Lakes during the early 1800s, early 1900s. And they're local, and which is interesting to me. Uh, some are based in Muskegon. Some of them are in White Lake. Some of them are in Detroit, some of them Chicago, but they're all about their little problems and, and it's, it's very interesting. These ships lasted 60, 70 years and usually capsized, burnt, or sunk at least three, four times in their, yeah. in their history. So it's, 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 it's very interesting stories. And a lot of those, you know, sometimes we get a chance to dive on some of them. So oh yeah, we sure do. So and most of them the that backstory. I've read are not found yet. Oh. Opportunities so, for us. Yeah. There you go. So cool. a little research. So we'll have to. Uh, I'll have to read some books. It's summertime. I've been a little busy diving, but I guess yes. uh, maybe this winter I'll get into some reading. So, anyways, uh, that's it for this week's show. I want to make sure you guys follow us on Twitter and Facebook, as well as uh, visiting our website. Uh, make sure that you're emailing us. We would love to hear from you guys. Uh, our email address is fans at talkingscuba.com. Uh, we look forward to see, to uh, seeing you guys in on the next show. 
And uh, thanks for everybody. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. I said that right. Okay. Right. 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 Have a good one. <laughs> Bottom up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jim had a rough week. Yes. <laughs> You're a tough SOB, aren't you? Getting tougher by the minute. <laughs>